Good morning, darling sunshines of the world. How are you guys doing? My neighbor's playing saxophone, but we're just gonna roll with it, so. I legitimately think they're playing the Pink Panther theme. Oh, they are. That is hilarious. Welcome back to a new reading vlog. I'm really excited for this week because I have some goals. For me, it is the end of the week now, but I am back um, at the start of the week for you to thank today's sponsor of this reading vlog, which is Likewise. So Likewise is an app that aims to solve problems that I think we all have, or at least I know you guys have because you're constantly asking me for book recommendations. And I think as well, it'll let me be a better problem solver for those problems because Likewise recommends you things based on things you like. So say you just finished a super specific book and you want something exactly like it, but also slightly different, Likewise is gonna have that answer for you. It offers personalized recommendations after you put in a little bit of info about yourself and what you enjoy. It does books, it does movies, it does TV shows. For me, it's been super helpful because as you guys know, I've been getting back into watching movies. And as of right now, I've only been marathoning the Studio Ghibli films ever since I think April now um, but unfortunately Studio Ghibli is not gonna last forever there is going to come a point where I'm gonna run out um, and I honestly like just want to keep watching magical movies like that that literally make my chest feel like it's gonna burst um, and so likewise has some really great recommendation based on all the Studio Ghibli movies I've been watching so the app is powered by a wombo combo of smart tech as well as real recommendations from real people so you get kind of the best of both worlds there on the app you get a feature called today cards where every day it refreshes to give you personalized recommendations based on what you've been loving recently and if you do find yourself interested in any of these you can easily just save them under the save tabs you can make lists and as well if you just want to buy the book immediately or whatever it may be it will take you to a link where you can just purchase the book right from like the app itself which is super cool I think likewise is such a great tool and one that I might use as well for creating more personalized recommendations for you guys because it has stuff from like classics the horror to graphic novels to romance which is a genre i've been trying to explore more so if you would like to download it there is a link at the top of my description box it's 100 completely free and then you can start getting whatever kind of book recommendations you're looking for so thank you so much likewise and let's get into the week
Hi, yeah. Today is May 13th, I believe. Um, over the past, wait, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday I woke up to 100,000 people here on my channel, um, which was just so fun, so crazy. Thank you so much. And so this week I've kind of I've been scrabbling, scrabbling, scrambling to put up some 100K celebration stuff and stuff like that and get it all ready because it honestly like kind of came too quickly and I wasn't, that's what she said, and I wasn't prepared for um, the 100k to just you know so anyway i put up some bloopers and i have some more fun stuff i need to get ready and do today but um i think the theme for this reading vlog i want to be kind of reading the most books possible like the most books on my made to be are possible before the dark um academics the da readathon the da party readathon starts and that starts on may 22nd and that runs for a week um so i'll definitely be reading a lot then but i have like my tbr for the readathon planned out because we're doing prompts you can find the announcement video um if you'd like to join in it's definitely not too late it's never too late to join in um so if you'd like to participate i'll leave that up above but i like i said i have all my prompts for that so so i have some other books that i've been reading in the meantime and i have a lot of them i want to get to so that's the goal for this week but this update's going to be pretty short because i'm about to go do some work and stuff like that but um the book i'm currently reading that i have here is girl in translation by jean kwok i am a pretty decent amount of the way through i've been listening to this every single day i am 229 pages through and i'm really like it. I wasn't sure what to expect. I had really never heard of this book before but I recommend the audiobook as well because it's just so immersive. This month I've just been so lucky to be reading so many good books that are like actually just so so good and like make you feel like you're right there with them. So Girl in Translation is about our protagonist Kimberly and she has just come to Brooklyn, New York from Hong Kong with her mother but as soon as she gets there um, kind of the American dream is a little bit uh, taken down and and made more gray than than gold for them as they find out they have to work at their aunt and uncle's sweatshop in Chinatown basically all day and especially as Kimberly is trying to go to school um, by day and then she works with her mother in the factory at night and so you basically just follow it all from Kimberly's perspective as she is making her way in New York with her mom learning English basically having to be the adult in that relationship and it's just so real um like i said it's incredibly immersive the writing is just so good from like the the style and our protagonist and everything that it's trying to embody because you really feel like um it, it's not fiction at all and so much of it is based on the author's own life when she was growing up and immigrated to brooklyn herself so it's just it's honestly so good and i'm really really liking it so that is that one i'm very happy with that and Last night, uh, another quick update on a book that we read this week because today is actually Thursday. I finished um, The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin always manages to blow my mind no matter what it is. This is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. It's so good. It's just so good. I honestly got a little bit confused in places because the Broken Earth is just like such a high concept fantasy it's ridiculous i would highly recommend picking it up because it is about this world um where earth has seasons and the se a season is basically destruction demolition we have the earth um that gets very angry and then you know everything is kind of based in this like geology world um that is the fantasy element and then we have people called origins who can control the earth who can sense um, what is going on in the earth and stuff like that and we have guardians who control to an extent the origins and it's just it's so good it's just incredible so that was the second one that i finished still have war and peace on the go of course if you'd like to check out the tolstoy diaries i will also leave those up above since i don't really talk about that monster in these reading vlogs because that would take too much time but um right now the first thing i want to do this morning it's around 11 20. i got you know when you get one new book and then you have to put that on your bookshelf and it just completely disrupts and makes you reorganize every single thing on your bookshelf. That's what we're gonna do. Hi, so we're now sitting on my balcony I'm hoping you can hear me, but yesterday um, I went with my mom and grandma back 
to the little strawberry farm and nursery and gardening place and I picked up this guy right here so I'm very excited um, this whole time I've been living here I've never had a garden balcony garden or anything like that but this one is a mix of a whole bunch of different plants that I'm gonna try to grow and hopefully then eat um, as well myself so I absolutely love this um, these are little tomatoes look we already have <gasps> guys we already have little tomatoes oh my gosh I love it um, and then we have a few pepper plants on either side so we have sweet pepper um, just two different colors red and yellow right here we have some rosemary which I'm really excited about and some oregano which I'm also really excited about He's just so cute. I really hope he does well. Um, it requires full sun and I'm just gonna try my best. Um, I'm just so excited that we already have tomatoes. It is just so incredibly nice and sunny out here um, this afternoon. So I think what I'm gonna do is gonna grab War and Peace and read it out here. I do have some other audiobooks that are in that I can pick up. So the first one is The Rage, Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, I think his name is, is the author. But this is another fantasy. I've been really in the mood for like long epic fantasy. So I might give this one a go and just see how it goes. And then I also have um, First Love by um, Ivan Turgenev. So I really want to pick up that one. I started that one last night, but I think I only got five minutes into it. So those are kind of two books I want to read before the readathon starts. And then I also have Anne of Green Gables, um, which just got in, which I'm really excited about because it's like perfect weather, perfect time to read that one. So we're going to try this week to pick and see which ones we're going to read. All right. So it's a little bit later now. It's almost four o'clock. I had a nap. Um, and I did manage to fit that book onto my bookshelf. But I did actually have some book mail come, which is so exciting. So I'll definitely show you what I got. This first one came with a really wonderful note from Catherine. She said, enjoy your gift, love watching your videos. Have a great read, Kathy. Thank you so much. And she got me Castle in the Air by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the second book in, um, I don't know what the series is called. I'm not sure if it's called Howl's Moving Castle because the first one is Howl's Moving Castle and then this is Castle in the Clouds. So from what I know, they're not necessarily related. Like I don't think we follow any of the same characters, but I'm so excited it matches my nails today. So the back says, by day, Abdullah is a humble carpet merchant, yet in his dreams, he is a prince. But his dreams start to come true when he meets the lovely flower in the night. When a hideous djinn carries flower off into the sky, Abdullah is determined to rescue her, if he can find her, and if he can avoid all the ferocious villains who seem to be after him. I love it. I'm so excited. I would love to reread Howl's Moving Castle, especially now that I've seen the movie and like I could compare the two again. But thank you so much, Kathy. That is so cute. It looks so good beside like my edition of Howl's as well. Okay, and then this next one, it didn't actually have a note with it. So if you sent me the murmur of bees, please let me know this cover. <gasps> It's just absolutely gorgeous. So this is The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia. And I um, was just so excited about this one because a number of you guys actually recommended it to me. And the little back just says, a wondrous change is coming to a small Mexican town. I believe um, there's some magical realism involved. So this elderly woman finds a baby abandoned under a bridge and then the small and then the life of a small Mexican town forever is changed. Disfigured and covered in a blanket of bees, Little Simonopio is for some locals the stuff of superstition, a child kissed by the devil. So as he grows up, this child apparently starts to have visions of the future and what's what is to come and stuff like that. It just sounds like it's gonna be so good. And like, as he grows up, he still has this swarm of bees around him. He's always protected by the swarm of bees. So it's also set against the backdrop of the Mexican revolution and the devastating influenza of 1918. So um, I think this is gonna be Oh, it's just gonna be so good. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna go put these on my shelves as well. Thank you guys so much. Um, and like I said, if you sent me the Murmur of Bees, please let me know somehow. So thank you so much.
All right, hi guys, welcome to Saturday now. Um, I'm home, we're doing some bit of gardening and I'm very excited because everything is just growing so nicely. So um, I'm just gonna go work in the garden for a little, little bit, we're planting some things and then I brought my books with me, of course. I also want to show you guys, I was very kindly given a bee house, a bee hotel, a bee box. I love it. I will leave the shop listed down below because it's actually so cute. When I was little, I used to make like bug hotels, but now this is like an actual legit one where hopefully some bees will come in and stay. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's such a great idea. And I just want to say thank you so much for sending one my way here. I'll show you guys. Yeah, here it is. It's beautiful. And then you can like open the latch, open it up, and so excited about it. All right, so I'm just about finished up um, with Girl in translation. It's a bit later now. I'm literally two pages away from finishing this. And like, I really, really want to because it's breaking my heart. So much of it has already broken my heart, but there's also a lot um, about relationships in here. You will discover something wonderful about yourself. Well, there's a first time for everything. Wait, she wants- Anyway, so the goal is to finish this this evening, which like I'm just gonna do right now after I sign this off, but it's just crushing me. So good. I love this book. I would highly recommend. Um, if I didn't mention, this is Girl in Translation by Jean Kwok. Ah, such a good one. Such a wonderful, compelling story, and I'm really happy that um, I got to pick this one up this month. So I'm gonna finish that tonight. Um, I know I was talking about First Love by Sergei Niev, and I actually managed to finish that last night because it was just so good. I think I'm gonna give it five stars, but it was just gorgeous. I'm gonna have so much to say about it in my wrap up and it was just incredible. Such a good introduction as well to Turgenev as a writer and I would just highly, highly recommend First Love. All right, hey guys, welcome to Sunday now. I thought today we could just pretty much hang out for the whole day. Um, I have a lot of reading updates, and like I said, kind of the goal for this week was to read as much as possible before the readathon starts on the 22nd, because I think probably for next week, starting tomorrow, I just want to take it a little bit chill and stuff like that. But um, I have managed to finish a lot of books. One of them, let me grab it. <laughs> I did finish Girl in Translation last night. I ended up giving it four stars. The ending honestly killed me a little bit, but overall I would highly recommend this book. Um, it's so easy to fall into and get swept away. I absolutely adore Kimberly, our protagonist. Um, I think she's incredible. I loved reading from her point of view. This book was just it's so good, so good. Um, it is also semi-autobiographical and it's just, Wow. This one was a very kind gift from Linda. Thank you so much. Um, I had heard of this and I, then I like tagged it on Libby and then it appeared in my PO box. So thank you so much. Um, I really, really liked it. And like I said, I would highly recommend. Um, I'm not sure if Jean Kwok has anything else out, but I will definitely be looking into more of her works. So really glad that I picked that one up. I did actually get some book mail. Thank you so much. This is from Kevin over at Storyglyph. I will link his channel down below because I love it. Um, and he sent me a book with a really nice note for 100k and this one as well as a recommendation for you guys. But Kevin, thank you so much. This looks incredible. This is Kristen Lavensdotter. Am I saying that right? By Sigrid Und. Unset. This cover is so beautiful. This is a story about Norway, but it's set in the 14th century. Um, this is technically book one, which is called The Wreath, and it is kind of a love story, but it is more like the life story of Kristen, who is our protagonist who we're following and stuff like that. But it says, starting with Kristen's childhood and continuing through her romance with Erland, a dangerously charming and impetuous man, Sigurd Inset recreates the historical backdrop in vivid detail, immersing readers in the day-to-day -day life, social, social conventions, and political undercurrents of the period. But the story she tells is a modern one brought to life with clarity and lyrical beauty in this remarkable translation. This is translated by Tina Nunali. Yeah, it is a romance set in 14th century Norway. 
I'm like honestly so excited about this one. A couple of you guys recommended this to me, so yeah. Um, I know that Kristen has quite a hard time with her parents because she kind of goes against all their wishes for her and ends up getting with this man, Erland. So yeah, thank you so much. This is gorgeous. Definitely gonna go find a very nice place on my bookshelf for this, so. And I think I did say that I finished First Love. I did decide to give that one five stars because I was so impressed. The writing was gorgeous and it was more than just like first love. It really shows how different love is um, for everyone and how someone's first love is so different from like everyone else's. There were so many different connections in this book. It looks like my nails are part of the highlighter. Um, it was just, it blew me away. It's so much more than like it seems to be. It's also kind of like, not like a crime who done it, but almost like, kind of something like that. I'm not going to say too much else because I think going into it with no expectations, um, kind of like I did, was amazing. And in the end, I gave it five stars. It was beautiful. It was just a beautiful story. If I didn't say we're following 16 year old, um, uh, what is his name? Voldemar. And he falls in love with a 21 year old woman named Zenaida. And Zenaida has a bunch of suitors who are always at her house. There's so many different people. And so Voldemort gets swept into these soirees with Zenaida and all these different men at her house. Um, and of course, Voldemort is just like Voldemort. Not Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort is just head over heels for um, Zenaida. And so he's really coping with first love, obviously jealousy because there's so many different men there. And he's also having family problems with his parents. And there's just so much in this book. So five stars, really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. And now, because we finished up those two books, I'm gonna try and see what else we can squeeze into today, Sunday, and see kind of maybe what books I can find from those books that I've been liking. So we're gonna try that, and we're gonna try out some chapters of some books today, I think. All right, uh, I'm so sorry if you can hear the ice cream truck, but it's just out there doing ice cream truck things. I've listened to a couple chapters of some books, like I said, that we wanted to try out this week. The first few, I might have a DNF this month. I think I might have a few DNFs, honestly. Um, I picked up The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This was the one I was talking about a little bit. This is an extremely long um, epic fantasy with dragons. Um, dragons have already appeared in the first chapter, which is exciting, like the prologue. And basically I got an hour and a bit through it. I'm not super invested and I was gonna DNF, but then I went on Goodreads. I saw literally this book has extremely high reviews. So many people are giving it five stars, which um, really motivates me to keep going with it. So I'm not gonna DNF it permanently or anything like that. I definitely wanna come back to it, but I think just right now, especially because I am gonna be trying to do a readathon um, next, next week, no. No, in the last week. Um, I don't think uh, a super, super long high fantasy is what I really want to be stepping into right now. And also I just really wasn't invested in the world. And what I did listen to didn't really captivate me. I know this one is set um, in this world and we are following the Omehi people and they are in constant war. I believe they've been in constant war for hundreds of years, but also in their society, one in every, I think 2000 women is born with the ability to call down dragons and call on dragons and fight their enemies for them. And then one in every, I think a hundred men is born with the ability to um, have these uh, huge powers of becoming faster, stronger, um, and better fighters and warriors. So the book opens with one of those women and one of those men. She's the queen and she calls down dragons. And it was really cool, but I just don't think I'm in the mood for it right now. So we're gonna pass on the Rage of Dragons for now. Still gonna keep it tagged on Libby and all of that jazz. Um, the next one I picked up, I've really been in the mood to try more romance in May. That was kind of my goal. I've really been enjoying getting some romance from manga. That's been amazing. I've been trying it a lot. I have a whole secret vlog coming soon, hopefully when I read some more, but I have been picking up a few. I have like a couple DNFs, which I'll talk about in my wrap up. I don't want to mention them here because it's not really worth it, but I just picked up one this morning, listened to the first hour again. We're going through a lot of sampling because I've been doing a lot of chores this morning, but I think this is the one I'm gonna potentially stick with because this one is The Ruthless Gentleman by Luis 
bay or something like that and like i'm hooked i'm in i'm hooked i think this is a good one it's also a perfect setting for me and one that's really interesting because we're set on a yacht like a luxury yacht out at sea and our protagonist we are following um hayden and avery avery is like the head stewardess of the yacht um, she also has a pretty compelling backstory and Hayden is of course, I'm not sure if he's a millionaire or billionaire or what, but he is now staying on this private yacht where Avery is the stewardess. I believe it's kind of like an enemies to lovers type of deal as well because he's kind of snobby and awful, um, at least for right now. I believe he's also doing some shady things as his job. Um, he's just taken away like all of the crew's phones and communication devices because he wants like absolute privacy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, ice cream trucks honestly kind of freak me out. Like I would not go up to an ice cream truck. What's next? <laughs> Give me the muffin man. I want to hear the muffin man. Uh, Muffin Man, I want to hear the Muffin Man, please. I want to hear the Muffin Man. Welcome to my nightmare. Okay, the Muffin Man. No, no. What the hell is this one? I don't know this one. Muffin Man, please. <laughs> the Muffin Man. <gasps> muffin Man. Do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Dairy Lane? Yes, that one's a bop. That's my favorite bop. This is insane. We're gonna have to put a pause on this because the ice cream truck children's bops are stealing my show. So, we'll come back to you later. You have now reached the end of this vlog. I think my final updates on reading and stuff like that. We finished Girl in Translation. We finished First Love. We put down Rage of Dragons. I'm still in the middle of Ruthless Gentleman. I'm about halfway through. It's just been a really nice, like fun companion. It's a pretty slow burn romance, especially because um, I think I was telling you Avery is like the stewardess on board. So she's technically not allowed to have like any relationship um, with guests or she would lose her job. But Hayden is actually the only guest on this yacht he's like booked the entire yacht it's a very huge yacht yachty for himself because there is like a leak at his company and he's trying to do work alone and like figure out who the mole is and stuff i'm honestly i still can't tell you what this man does I really don't know what his job is. I'm honestly not sure he does either, but I think it's fun and like there has been some romance so far. And then I've also been reading some more manga, which you guys will see hopefully in a later different vlog. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna try picking up anything else between Ruthless Gentleman, War and Peace, of course, and I'm still reading The Alienist. I've been reading a short story here and there throughout the month. I hope to finish it by the end of the month, but I think that's gonna be another five star, honestly, which is great but other than that i'm not sure i'm gonna pick up anything super heavy i might do like a, another romance in there before the readathon starts because i don't have any romances on my readathon prompts and that was a little bit of the goal for may as well but if you have joined us for the readathon it started yesterday so i will be vlogging the whole thing i will be being a very busy bumblebee by the time you see this um and i hope you guys join along feel free to jump in whenever you want do whatever prompts you want take it at your own pace i think i should have linked the da video somewhere in this vlog already so um also i uploaded my first asmr video last night which i was really nervous about but you guys are just always so freaking nice um and it just it makes me so happy so that is up on my asmr channel which is also um found on oh there's a bumblebee speak of the bumblebees and they will be they will be um so the link to my asmr channel i think is on my main channel but it is the lunar library and i just uploaded like a very rambly random weird facts about myself and yeah that was fun i'm looking forward to making more if you guys have requests please tell me them and as for right now i think i'm going to sign off it is one of the hottest days of the year so far i have no ac moving vlog coming soon hopefully and um yeah i hope you guys are doing spectacularly well as well i started watching from up on poppy hill last night which is the the ghibli movie that i decided to go with next after finishing totoro 
a few days ago i finally finished totoro i've been watching that one for a really long time um i really liked it but i think out of the ones i've seen so far totoro i think is at the bottom of the list and like by bottom i mean like they're literally all so spectacularly good that like there's really not that much difference between the two but so far i think my ranking is like spirited away howl's moving castle princess mononoke totoro but from up on poppy hill that i just started last night I like cried because I was so happy watching it like I've never heard anyone talk about that Studio Ghibli film but like I, it's like really vying for number one spot so far and I only got 15 minutes in last night which is crazy so yeah but speaking of movies thank you so much likewise again for sponsoring this reading vlog this week super helpful love the app love you thanks for reaching out to me once again the link is in the description box and without further ado I'm gonna sign off Oh my god. Wait, guys, where are all these bugs coming from? Wait. What? What the? Did someone like poke a nest? What was that? Like the freaking seven plagues of hell. Oh my god, I can't even hear that. All right, well, super weird ending to the vlog, I guess. I just saw literally a whole swarm. I don't know if it was wasps or what, but I've never seen that many bugs. It was like a plague. It's like a biblical plague outside my window. Welcome to welcome to this channel. Things just keep getting weirder and weirder. I don't know what to say. Anyway, with that, ciao.